on this third Sunday of Easter, there are two words, two concepts, really, um, that that strike me. One because um, they're both familiar, but sometimes we uh, kind of see them in different ways. The first one is from the, the first letter of Peter, the second reading, which is ransom. Um, you'll remember. If you invoke as father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourself with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct, not your sinful conduct, not your bad conduct, your futile conduct. That's something to remember, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but you were ransomed with the precious blood of Christ as a spotless, unblemished lamb. So we're, we, what we're used to is, is ransom, but we think of it all the time as ransom from our sins um, and the references uh, to the, the Jewish temple practices of, of sacrificing a spotless lamb have become part of the way we understand ourselves and Jesus. Um, this is the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Um, when Peter talks about our futile conduct, our conduct that doesn't get us what we want. You know? um, and so you could look at that um, as a sinful conduct. Sometimes we think sinful conduct is getting us what we want, and that's why we do it. But the letter of Peter says it's futile, futile conduct, futile conduct. Now, well, why? Why do we engage in that if it really doesn't get us what we want? And that's because we've become fixated on things that won't last, that won't deliver, that won't fulfill. That's what happens. And so we engage in conduct that gets us that instead of what we think we want, which is salvation, fullness of life, satisfaction, peace, joy, all of these good things we want and we engage in futile conduct. Now, the second one is seeing the gospel. It's one of the, the most beautiful gospels that there is, the story of the road to Emmaus, where their eyes were opened, and they're opened in the breaking of the bread. They're opened uh, in that moment, for us now we know as the Eucharist, in that moment when the real Christ becomes present to us and we see clearly there's something that's healed in us because we can see Christ in the bread we can see Christ in one another we can see Christ in the poor and we begin to value all of these things instead of the things that take us away and make us engage in futile conduct and so once we can see we begin to engage in meaningful conduct so What's the thing that's holding us back? It can't be our sin because we've been delivered from that by Jesus. It could be the results of the sin that call us to different things, but I think sometimes it's simply this. We're not close enough to the real Jesus. We hide from one another. We hide from the poor. We hide from ourselves. We don't see clearly, and so our eyes fix on things that aren't going to last. And we reach and we grasp for them and we engage in futile conduct instead of meaningful conduct. Conduct that connects us with our deepest selves, that connects us with one another, that connects us to the world where Jesus is, the world of the poor and the suffering. That's what I'm thinking about this week. Why is it that I engage in futile conduct instead of meaningful conduct? Because I don't see well. I don't see well. And I don't see well because I'm just not close enough to see. It's not because my eyes haven't been opened. It's just I don't get close enough. The Almighty God bless you and me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.